Ever since the election, we spent a lot of time talking about the Trump administration's potential impact on American companies that do a lot of business overseas. But what about foreign companies that do business in America? Take SAP, the gigantic German software maker that dominates the enterprise market. So many of the companies we have on use their software. Even though SAP is one of the oldest software companies around, they've made huge strides when it comes to shifting their business onto the cloud thanks in part to a series of very smart acquisitions. And that's given the numbers a real boost. When SAP reported a little over two weeks ago, the company delivered a 14-cent earnings beat off of a $1.50 basis. And even though its revenues came in a tad light, what really matters is that management raised their full-year guidance for both the top and bottom line. That's one of the reasons why the stock keeps climbing, hitting a new all-time high today in Europe. What a fabulous company with a terrific CEO, Bill McDermott, who rang the opening bell today and said hello to me when I was down there in Post 9. So can SAP stock keep climbing here? Let's take a closer look with Steve Singh. He's the president of Business Networks and Applications at SAP, who's in town today for the company's annual Capital Markets Day in New York City. Steve was the CEO of Concur Technologies, and he gave you a magnificent, are you ready, ski daddy, 932% gain from his company's IPO in 1998 through the eventual sale to SAP in 2014. So I always think it's worth listening to what Steve has to say. Mr. Singh, welcome back to Mad Money. Hi, Jim. Nice to see you again. Well, first, what's life like at a big company? You started a fantastic company. We all use Concur here. You sold it, and you stayed. That's unusual. It, SAP is a great company, and I'm having a lot of fun, frankly, I'm having a lot of fun growing my portion of the business and, uh, and, and really seeing the whole company thrive. Well, you do something interesting at SAP. SAP has made a series of acquisitions. Each time they made one, I heard skeptics from, of course, the other team saying, oh, that won't matter. But it looks like every time SAP does an acquisition, it brings in new customers for the rest of their business. Can you talk about that, that kind of journey that companies take when they concur and then they go to SAP and some of these other businesses? Yeah, Jim, you're exactly right. And look, this obviously is an acquired company, concur coming into SAP. We benefited from the fact that, that SAP has a very large customer base that embraced the Concur solution. But it's also the other way around. Right? And so whether you're talking about a L'Oreal or HSBC or a Siemens or um, you know, um, you know, Pfizer, what we're, what we're finding is that customers are embracing all the SAP solutions. So you may start off with a Concur and then buy other SAP solutions, whether that's Ariba or Fieldglass or our S4 product or the other way around. So we're seeing tremendous synergies, um, you know, across the, uh, the acquired businesses. Okay, so, you know, let's, so let's take an example of for uh, Field Glass. I mean, acquired in, in March of 2014, it kind of happened. I didn't think it would really matter that much, but it has done well, right? Look, Field Glass is a tremendous product. It, it helps our customers manage a very large portion of their workforce. Typically, a company will have 30 to 50 percent of their workforce that's either contingent or service-based. And so you want to be able to manage that team of people the same way you manage your internal uh, team of people. And so Fieldglass bridges the, that gap. It allows you to integrate with success factors and manage every part of your workforce with the same level of transparency and, and frankly, engagement. Oh, success factors, we should mention that's human capital management. That has been a very good acquisition too, right? Yeah. yeah in fact, I will tell you, I, I'm really pleased to see the performance of all of the SAP acquisitions, whether you're talking about success factors or Ariba or Fieldglass or Concur, uh, or for that matter, Hybris. In fact, if you look at just Ariba, right, uh, what Alex Atzberger, who's the president of that group, has done over the last couple of years has been amazing. Right? He's driven an incredible focus on, on a better user experience, on, a, on greater innovation, and that's showing up in better customer satisfaction and, frankly, doubling uh, bookings growth rates. So talk, it's, been, it's been a real joy. I want to talk to you about Concur. I mean, this was travel and expense management, and until this, there was always, you had a shoebox of receipts. Took a huge amount of time. <laughs> Just talk about what automation did, because I think that this is really kind of, it's both a, you know, it's a story about what progress is about. That's why I liked it so much. Yeah, and, and Jim, maybe I'll, I'll take a different twist on the Concur story for just okay. a second. Right? There's been this massive transformation from, cli uh, from client server to cloud computing. Right. There's another shift coming, and that's from cloud computing to microservices. Now, now I realize that microservices is a, a bit geeky, so maybe uh, I can, I can uh, I'll give you a simple example of this. When Kate, uh, your producer, sent me an email saying, hey, would you like to come on the show? You know, obviously, I, I always love seeing you. So I said, of course, I'll, I'll be there Thursday. And just in that email thread, what it did is it automatically decided that I should book travel for Steve out to New York so I can, I can join you in the show. And all that happened from within the email. And so what's happening is the email saying, hey, look, I need to book travel. I'll just call Concur 
and have Concur do it for me. So there's no, as a user, I don't go into Concur. I just go about my normal daily uh, routines and the applications start to take actions for me all seamlessly. That's unbelievable. I didn't know that. And by the way, speaking of unbelievable, Kate Colbrenner is unbelievable, our booker. She's done a remarkable job under huge pressure from me because I'm not always that nice. Uh, I, <laughs> I wanted to just ask you about the, the – it's a German company, but I've got to tell you, I, it, to me, it's all American. I don't get it. I mean, do you go to Germany? And, I mean, because, you know, Bill McDermott, he's like a Philly guy. I know you, you're, yeah. you know, I know you from Concur. I always am trying to understand what it means to be a German company because, boy, SAP seems as American as apple pie. You know, look, uh, SAP is German in its roots, but it's a global company. We operate in, in literally every major com uh, country in the world. And so I don't think of us as anything more than, than a company of the world. And uh, we are just as big in the U.S. as we are um, in, in Europe. Uh, in fact, arguably uh, larger uh, in the U.S. So this is a, it's a great company that's expanding and growing in, in literally every uh, corner of the world. All right, last question. Uh, you take, I mean, people are always saying, well, you're taking customers from Oracle, taking customers from Salesforce. To me, what it yeah. seems like is you're taking customers that are client server or that have one part of SAP, and then you're bringing them all the rest. And it's not really as much of a share take. And that's why we shouldn't think that if Salesforce is doing well, SAP is doing badly. You know, Jim, I think you're exactly right. There's plenty of room in this market for a lot of great companies to thrive, whether you're talking about Salesforce or you're talking about SAP or anyone else. Obviously, look, we're competitive. We want to win every piece of business. But the important thing is that we serve our customers. And if the customer wants to use us in 70, 80 percent of their enterprise needs and, and somebody else in another part of it, wonderful. We'll make sure we work collaboratively uh, with those uh, with those other companies and make sure the customer has an amazing experience. Well, I, it's terrific. And, boys, great to see you. I've, I bet I never take notes when a guest on here. I'm writing down this microservices. I didn't know it. Just like the old days when I wrote down cloud computing. You taught me that, too. I look Steve, forward to you talking did. to you about that again one day. Th thank you. Steve Singh, president of SAP's business networks and applications business and a real fabulous guy. What can I say? Man, money's back here for the break. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.